Let your spirit merge with the spirits of the powers of sky and earth, feeling as they are feeling, doing as they wish you to do. For they speak with the voice of Wankantanka, the lord of us all. They will enter you in vision if they see the way open. Time, space, and eternity. Is it possible to see the future? Destiny, said Edgar Cayce, America's renowned sleeping prophet, is created in time and space. God is time, space, and patience. All time is one. All life is one. People today are paying an increasing amount of attention to the predictions made by the great seers of history. These prophecies refer to a series of grave man-made and natural disasters that would befall mankind at what is almost certainly the close of this century. Although prophets of doom have existed for generations, we live in the first period of history in which science has begun to echo these seers' grave predictions. With the advent of nuclear power and environmental pollution, we now have the technical ability to trigger the global destruction the seers foretold, apart from anything nature may do without our assistance. However, the great prophets and seers were unanimous in their prediction of a new age of peace and plenty which would be born out of this calamitous period. Prophetic visions have guided mankind in all cultures throughout time. In the Holy Bible, 1 Corinthians, it is written, He that prophesies speaks unto men to edify, exhort, and comfort. Follow after love and desire spiritual gifts, so that ye may prophesy and edify the church. Scientists have long been reluctant to allow the possibility of any truth in prophetic visions or anything else that happens outside the realm of the five senses. Einstein recognized nothing but an eternal present, which, perhaps not surprisingly, is identical to what the ancient prophets believed. If the future exists already, then precognition or prophecy is possible. Science places the laws of physics into a four-dimensional continuum that is the eternal present. If this is so, then past, present, and future exist simultaneously. Perhaps it is only our consciousness which moves. Nostradamus, the great French visionary, accurately predicted in 1568 the coming French Revolution in 1789. He also predicted Napoleon, the Great Fire of London, World Wars I and II, Hitler, and aerial warfare, among others. In the rolling grasslands of the Great Plains and under the sheltering wall of the Black Hills, the ancient Pahasapa of the Sioux, the Cheyenne, and other Plains tribes, there lived for many years a true holy man, Black Elk of the Oglala Sioux. This wonderful human being, pure of heart, and a great teacher and healer, somehow managed to keep alive in his heart and mind the beautiful essence of his people and their meaning in the sacred circle of earth and sky. He was born into the free life of the Plains peoples in 1863, but had his first great and extraordinary vision as a nine-year-old boy on the Great Plains near the Little Bighorn River, which is now Montana. High in the sky, he was carried in his dream, and up among the towering clouds to a beautiful teepee made of flaming rainbows, where he met a council of six grandfathers who represented the Great Spirit. They told him he was being sent out across the sky to see the future of his people and the world. Riding a bay horse and followed by four troops of horses, twelve in each troop, one black, one white, one yellow and one red, he started on his journey. On this journey he saw repeatedly that though his people at the time of the dream were wailing in the sacred way, under the flowering tree of their understanding and unity, they were soon to become sick in the spirit while great clouds and storms of darkness would surround and pummel them. Towards the end he saw them fleeing through a storm like frightened swallows, each voice crying alone, all unity lost. 
Later he was to understand that this great storm that broke and scattered his people was brought on by the coming of the white people who conquered them, broke their spirit and filled their minds with so much conflict, they indeed became lost. He was given the promise in his vision that something beautiful was coming and somehow the darkness would pass and a new day be born. He saw the daybreak star come from the east and with it a sacred being all colored red who turned into a bison and he understood that though the buffalo would be lost to his people, something else equally good would take its place. He saw also that he would help bring back the spirit of his people and plant the sacred herb that grew up into the mighty tree of understanding, spreading its beautiful branches over the earth. Under this tree, the sacred hoop of the Sioux, the symbol of their unity, which had been broken, grew back together again. Then he saw many other hoops of other peoples, and around them one great hoop that meant they had come into unity and understanding. Last, he saw that the day was so beautiful that even the rocks and trees danced with joy in the glorious light. Black Oak saw in this vision the day when a glorious message of love and understanding and unity would bring the entire human race into the sacred circle of harmony with themselves and all living things. This can only be possible when something with tremendous spiritual power changes the hearts of mankind. Later, Black Elk had a second great vision, which emphasized the power and the meaning of the first. In his dream, he was told that the message that would help and awaken his people would come from the East, and that it would come from a man clothed in red, who was like neither a white man or an Indian in appearance. Black Elk saw that when the people received this new message, when they understood that they would become like flames of fire spreading it to other people, but that those that did not receive the new message would be filled with darkness. After becoming enlightened under the Bodhi tree, the Indian prince Siddhartha had a vision that told him he was to be the Buddha, the light of Asia. As Buddha, he went forth among men and began to teach them a message of love and understanding. He taught the famous Eightfold Way that leads to true happiness, and he prophesied, I am not the first Buddha who has come upon the earth, nor shall I be the last. In due time, another Buddha will arise in the world, a holy one, a supremely enlightened one, endowed with wisdom, auspicious, embracing the universe, an incomparable leader of men, a ruler of angels and mortals, he will reveal to you the same eternal truths which I have taught you. He will establish his law, glorious in its origin, glorious at the climax, and glorious at the goal in the spirit and in the letter. He will proclaim a righteous life, wholly perfect and pure, such as I now proclaim. His disciples will number many, many thousands, while mine number hundreds. In 1929, Professor Nicholas Rorick, artist, explorer, and writer, returned from explorations in the Himalayan mountains north of India and wrote a book in which he told of a remarkable Buddhist prophecy he had found in the high Himalayas and which the people there believed was soon to come true. This is how he described it. It is told in the prophecies how the new era shall manifest itself. First will begin an unprecedented war of all nations. Afterward, brother shall rise against brother. Oceans of blood shall flow, and the people shall cease to understand one another. They shall forget the meaning of the world teacher. Just then shall the teacher appear, and in all corners of the world shall be heard the true teaching. To this word of truth shall the people be drawn, but those who are filled with darkness and ignorance shall set obstacles. As a diamond glows, so shall the light on the tower of the Lord, the prophet of the new age. One stone on his finger is worth more than all the world's treasures. Even those who by accident help the teachings of the prophet 
will receive in return a hundredfold. Already many warriors of the teaching of truth are reborn. Only a few years shall elapse before everyone shall hear the mighty steps of the Lord of the new era. And one can already perceive unusual people. Already they open the gates of knowledge and ripened fruits are falling from the trees. Those who accept him shall rejoice and those who deny him shall tremble. The denier shall be given over to justice and shall be forgotten. And the warriors shall march under the banner of Maitreya, the world uniter. The same thread of prophecy regarding a coming holocaust before the end of the 20th century and the emergence of a messiah or world teacher from the east clothed in red, following a great war who brings all the races on earth into unity, can be found in the Old Testament, the New Testament, American Indian prophecies, and among Buddhist, Hindu, Mormon, and Muslim teachings. With all these signs pointing in one direction, let us examine the life of a spiritual teacher of the 20th century, who not only fulfills the prophecies of the past, but whose teachings transcend the factionalism of history to encompass all humanity and tell the world that all faiths are facets of the truth. All are tributes to its glory. The belief that God incarnates in a human being can be found in many of the world's faiths and scriptures. Nowhere is it so predominant as in the Hindu faith. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said, for the protection of the good and the destruction of the evil doers, I, the Lord, will incarnate from time to time in human form. This avatar of God is said to come when good men are afflicted with fear of survival, to re-establish right ideals and right action. A full and complete avatar is recognized by the expression of the divine quality of omniscience, knowing all, omnipotence, all-powerful, and omnipresence, being in all time and space. Today, millions in India and other parts of the world have witnessed and experienced these qualities as expressed by Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba, whom they consider to be a full avatar. In the Mahabharata, the ancient Hindu testament, Lord Vishnu, the preserver and protector of the universe, foretold of a Kali Yuga corresponding to our present age, which would be marked by moral and spiritual decline, by political corruption, oppression, dishonesty, crime, and the prevalence of falsehood. Then Lord Vishnu said, When evil is rampant upon earth, I will take birth in the family of a virtuous man and assume a human body to restore tranquility by the extermination of evil. In the coming Kali age of sin, I will assume a human avatar form that is dark in color. I will be born in a family in South India. This avatar will possess great energy, great intelligence, and great powers. Material objects needed for this avatar's mission will be at his disposal as soon as he will think of them. He will be victorious with the strength of virtue. He will restore order and peace in the world. This avatar will inaugurate a new era of truth and will be surrounded by spiritual people. He will roam all over the earth, adored by the spiritual people. The people of this earth will imitate this avatar's conduct and there will be prosperity and peace. Men will once more betake themselves to the practice of religious rites. Educational centers for the cultivation of Brahmic lore and temples will reappear again everywhere. Ashrams will be filled with men of truth. Rulers of the earth will govern their kingdoms virtuously. The avatar will have an illustrious reputation. This prophecy 
is corroborated in the ancient classic scripture, the Vishnu Purana, which also mentions that this avatar will display superhuman powers in establishing the new age of truth. It adds, his parents will be devotees of Vishnu and will reside in a village worshipping the cowherd form of Lord Krishna. In fact, Sai Baba's mother and grandmother worshipped the aspect of Vishnu called Satchanarayana for months before he was born. And Puttaparthi village was formerly Ngolapalli, meaning home of the cowherds. So it is that the life of Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba appears to be fulfilling ancient prophecies and scriptures. Being completely merged with God, Sai Baba demonstrates the power of creating anything on the spot from the ether, that is, from apparently nothing and nowhere. Baba is frequently seen materializing vibhuti ash by a wave of his hand as a blessing and for healing sickness. The same power enables him to increase or decrease quantities and sizes at will and to cause objects to vanish or change their nature. As distinct from a magician, Sai Baba's powers do not disappear or decrease no matter how much he displays them. He never uses his powers for personal gain. They are always used to bring benefits to others and to honor and glorify God. Sai Baba's miracles are regarded as quite natural to his divinity and consistent with his mission. Baba does not attach undue importance to them. They are signs used for directing attention to the mystery that is God. He regards them as his calling cards. Unlike the powers earned by yogis through years of hard toil and austerities, Baba's miracles constitute his sankalpa, his nature. They are normal and casual expressions of his will. By materializing vibhuti, sacred ash, a ring, photograph, pendant, prayer beads, he brings joy into the lives of his devotees and leaves them with a token of his grace. He heals the sick, cures the blind, and appears just as he is to persons in far off places or in his subtle body in dreams. He hears the cries of distress of his devotees thousands of miles away and rushes help to them in clearly recognizable ways. He reads their innermost thoughts and with a sure knowledge of their past as well as their future, guides them into godliness. He showers his grace on those who have not seen him or heard of him and even on those who defame and deny him. By his actions, he instills in all a faith in God. 700 years after the death of Muhammad, his followers compiled his discourses into 12 mighty volumes, which are called the Hadith, or the work of light. Muhammad is alleged to have given 300 marks or signs by which El Mahdi, or the guided one as he calls him, will be recognized. Muhammad was asked if he, Muhammad, was the guided one. He said that he was not, and that no prophet of God had ever come to this world who had come with the power with which he, the guided one, will come. He went on to say that no prophet was like this great teacher, because all the prophets were killed by the people, as their power had not been sufficient to prevent their being killed, but that no power will be able to conquer or to kill the guided one. Muhammad continued, religious people will collect under a great tree. They will have a spot on their foreheads. If you want to know him, 
you should know the signs, but do not be deceived by many who declare that they are El Mehdi, the guided one. His hair will be profuse, his forehead will be large and concave, the nose will be small with a slight bump at the bridge, his front teeth will be spaced apart, he will not have a beard, but will be clean shaven, he will have a mole on the cheek, his clothing will be like a flame, the color of his face will sometimes be like copper, sometimes yellow like gold, sometimes very dark, and sometimes shining like the moon. His body will be small in size. All the teachings of all the religions of the world will be in his heart from birth. All the science and knowledge of the world from the beginning of time will be in his head. All things which you will ask from God, he, the guided one, will give to you. All the treasures of the world are under his feet. He will give everyone gifts that are light in weight. He will go amongst the devotees and touch their heads with his hand. Every eye that sees him will be happy, not only humans, but disembodied souls. His devotees will crane their necks to see him. He will live 96 years on earth. In the last 20 years of his life, he will be the king of the whole world. But at that time, only two-thirds of the people of the world will believe in him. Muslims will only recognize him nine years before his passing from the world. You could have stretched out your hand and been with him, but you missed him. So as not to be deceived, you should know that the guided one will bring things out of his body through his mouth. All the five elemental substances which constitute the creation, they are present in this Prithvi Lingam. All the base of creation is contained in this Lingam. The seer and prophet Nostradamus, in 1588, predicted that after the disaster of Armageddon, the new age will be inaugurated with the coming of a true savior, or avatar, who will guide the world in peace. He will initiate a new religion, whose day of rest will be Thursday, and his power greatly affect the East. He will grow into manhood in the 21st century and will help restore the earth and its peoples to a more perfect harmony and balance. He will be a reincarnation of holy avatars and messiahs of the past who were sent into the world at critical times to reveal the ancient wisdom of the spirit. Nostradamus said, when the new age peoples begin to revive the earth, and the avatar teaches mankind in the ways of spiritual brotherhood, the true nature of death and reincarnation will be revealed. Edgar Cayce, known as America's sleeping prophet, generally confirms these prophecies of Nostradamus. Just as the renowned saint, Sai Baba of Shirdi, told his followers at his death in 1918, that he would reincarnate in eight years as such a Sai Baba. So has such a Sai Baba said that he will live until he is aged 96, that is, until the year 2022, and would reincarnate eight years later in the year 2030 as Prima Sai Baba. Dr. Jack Hislop, president of the Satya Sai Baba Society of America, gives us a prophetic glimpse into the future. There's a lot of interest in the Prima Sai Baba ring because it's a look into the 21st century. Swami created this ring for me several years ago. First, he had given me a very big gold ring with the portrait of himself on the ring, raised in gold, gold relief. So the very next morning, he took it away from me again and said to me, well, Hislop, 
would you prefer to have Satya's eye or Prema's eye? So I didn't know what to answer, really, so I said, Swami, let it be your will. So he said, all right, then let it be Prema's eye. So he took this very heavy gold ring between thumb and forefinger, just breathed on the ring one time, and uh, lo and behold, there was this ring. The gold ring had changed to a silver ring with this portrait of Prema Sai. Prema, of course, means love, and uh, Prema Sai is the incarnation of Satya Sai Baba, which will uh, herald uh, an era of uh, peace and love in the Western world. Prema Sai Baba, Today, evil is so widespread that humanity itself would be destroyed in a nuclear holocaust in the event of a world war. It is to prevent such a catastrophe that this avatar has come to save the world from disaster. The world today is in the grip of a supreme moral and spiritual crisis. People everywhere are feeling frustrated and helpless and anxiously wondering what is in store for humanity. The hopes raised by the advances of science and technology have proved false. While science has overcome the barriers of time, distance, and nationality, it has done little to promote better understanding between man and man and nation and nation. Never has there been so much distrust, hatred, and violence as witnessed today in almost every country. Men have forgotten their essentially divine nature and have even failed to observe those basic human qualities which raise them above the level of animals. In the ceaseless pursuit of material acquisitions and sensuous pleasures, they have forgotten that the real source of happiness and bliss is the discovery of the Atma that is in each of them. There are, however, heartening signs that earnest people in many countries are turning to the way of the spirit as the answer to the crisis that faces humanity. There is a spiritual hunger that is growing in every country. Without the conquest of one's passions and desires, and without realizing the divinity that is imminent in every living thing, man cannot achieve peace, bliss within, or harmony with the outside world. The message of fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, which Jesus Christ proclaimed 2,000 years ago, should become a living faith for the achievement of real peace and the unity of mankind. The oneness of all creation, affirmed by the ancient seers and sages, must be expressed in a transcendental love which embraces all people, regardless of creed, community, or language. I have come to light the lamp of love in your hearts to see that it shines day by day with added luster. I have not come to speak on behalf of any religion. I have not come for publicity for any sect or creed or cause. Nor have I come to collect the followers for any doctrine. I have no plans to attract disciples or devotees into my fold or any fold. I have come to tell you of this universal unitary faith this atmic principle, this path of love, this duty of love, this obligation to love. May you all develop this divine love and stand out as the harbingers of a new age, free from selfishness, greed, hatred, and violence. Let each of you be a light unto himself or herself, and thereby be a light unto others. This is Sai's message to you all.